bought a watercolor set from Amazon. Pretty inexpensive, but it did have pretty good reviews and I spent a heck of a long time designing on this one. So we're unboxing it and just seeing what it's like. I didn't really want to get like the best like professional kind of watercolors because I'm just messing around with watercolor and just learning about it because I know nothing the last time I did watercolors in grade school and that was just making little water bubbles and putting pigment into it and just seeing what it did. <laughs> And so yeah, we'll do definitely gonna do more than that. But again, I have no knowledge of any techniques, and I quickly learned that you definitely need to know what you're doing in watercolor to really make anything good. You can't just go in using them like markers, which is basically what I did. Or I have more experience drawing digitally. You can't really draw it like digitally. It just doesn't work, as you might expect. But I feel like with watercolor. It's just a whole new ball game of medium to work with. It's not as intuitive. It's definitely very strategic. But you know, we just have fun, and I definitely didn't draw myself. I didn't realize, however, that this set came with a water pen. I don't know if there's a right name for this kind of brush, but that's what I'm gonna call it. But you know, I gave it a try, and I uh, did three types of paper here. Standard printer paper, um, and medium, and then harder cardstock paper, which I just happen to have. And also because I didn't really want to use super good watercolor just to play around with. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, so it seems quite wasteful. And also for the fact that, you know, now having this watercolor pen, is no point in using super good materials for this, but yeah. So I don't really know why I really wanted to test the paper because I already had an idea that it wasn't going to work so well on the printer paper. <laughs> but I guess I just wanted to see that like with my own eyes rather than like fundamentally know, oh yeah, it's not going to work. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did. And uh, surprisingly, the cards of paper, the hardest one, it was not that bad. It was it actually held the pigment and the water quite well. And it had slightly different textures, it was almost like more smooth. And um, I mean, it does get grainy because it is not any quality paper made specifically for watercolor. Still not that terrible. And I, I test out washes on there because watercolor washes are so pretty. Again, I don't have any idea how to properly do them. I just have a loose idea from, you know, watercolor videos I washed way, way long ago. But yeah, I'm not doing them properly, so for anybody who actually knows how to paint watercolor, you're probably gonna cringe a lot during watching this video. Yes, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And to this day, I still don't know what I'm doing. Although I'm a little more knowledgeable now, I know where my faults lie and where my lack of knowledge is, where I need to improve. But whether or not I can actually execute them is another question. But at least in this video, me just playing with watercolor, I didn't think too hard about it. I didn't say, oh gosh, this looks terrible, but I played around and I had fun. So like playing in the sand, you know, just playing in the dirt. Not really being super serious about it. And just having fun with the different papers, <laughs> the colors. I do love how watercolor looks, which is why I did choose it as my first medium to play around with starting this jump start into a uh, art journey of mine. Probably not the best choice though retrospectively because it involves a lot. <laughs> it's not very beginner friendly. If you have no idea of just even the bare minimum of how you ought to use watercolor, very hard to make something that looks neat you really can't go about it as if you're just using you know colored pencils even it just it doesn't work <laughs> but it's fine I, I love how the brushes and the, like, the brush strokes how they look with watercolor and uh, it's really fun it really lends itself to foliage and uh, flowers and all sorts of uh, nature items it looks very good for 
nature's and landscape and I hope one day I can be able to paint some decent ones, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see me cutting um, one hair off this brush. Um, I mean, you get what you paid for, I suppose, but just that one thing and it kind of created a weird texture so I had to cut it a few times, but it's not that bad afterwards, I had no issues with it. Still not going to be a brush that I consistently use afterwards, but again, this is just me playing around. For now, just with your start to set, like, what can you do with, I guess, plain old paper. Not printed paper, you really can't do anything on that, but just non-watercolor paper and just what comes out of the box. And uh, yeah, I have this little masking tape I put down. I just love that. It's so satisfying to put down, really. And it does make it a lot cleaner to work with because of the edges and something else, um, especially with this kind of paper that's not designed for watercolor. It keeps your paper down so that it doesn't wrinkle, which is very essential for watercolor. And because I'm not using the best paper for it, you know, you are fighting your materials a little bit, which is not the greatest thing, but you know, for at least trying it out, not bad. You're, you're just really digging in and just playing around, messing around. That's, I mean, that's what this is. And uh, I just have fun with it, just how the strokes go down and how they mix. It's still pretty nice and it is fun. Now, I did do a thing where I tried picking up some of the pigment, you know, you see this thing, you're like, ah, oh, let me try that out. Look, I, I, again, it requires technique. You probably even sh shouldn't be doing that because you shouldn't get to a point where oh, I'm, you know, this is too much here, I'm gonna go try to pick it up as if it's an eraser. You really have to be strategic and mindful planning what you're doing. And the thing is, I have no idea, not even just no idea of what I'm doing, I don't even know what I set out to do. I mean, I'm just doodling. I really am just doodling and just playing around. And watercolor, you need to have an idea and a set plan. Otherwise, it's either going to take really too long or you're just going to really mess up your paper. Because watercolor is something of a fight against time, being able to control how the paint looks and how it behaves. You need to be really patient with it. And I. Yeah, I, I do none of that during this session. I'm just like, oh, slap on some colors and see how, see how the paint goes. And uh, for the most part, you know, just for beginning, it's still satisfying. It's not bad. I mean, it could be worse. It definitely doesn't look like the kind of watercolor that I aspire to make. But, I mean, it's decent, I guess. <laughs> it's a really childish looking artwork but eh, whatever and it's very fun feeling with the tape but yeah if you put it on right I, I clearly I have this lopsided and <laughs> I ripped the tube <laughs> it is okay it's I'm not <laughs> it's nothing important so I let it go and it's at this point where I realized my uh, recording stopped because I hit my memory and uh, yeah so I had to redo it or I thought I had to redo it which is why kind of see by my hand language that I'm like kind of upset like oh, whatever chuck it away <laughs> so I'm kind of redoing like oh, okay I did this but I don't have the video for it but the video came later which is great I guess it just takes a while to process so that's awesome and uh, yeah I just here at this point I redo kind of everything however I do make a palette because I did not make a palette like you probably should do when you get you know for any medium colors and sometimes you know they don't match what the description in the little pamphlet has for you however this one you know surprisingly the colors did match for the most part um what a set they would be there were a few that were not as pigmented but this is not a super high quality set so i don't expect the pigments to be that great and for what you get i think they're pretty decent and yeah, not bad. The only thing is the browns do look a lot like one another. That's the only thing. They don't look similar in the palette. I'm gonna put them down. 
it's really hard to tell the difference. That there's probably my only little qualm, but it's not too bad. I don't do any color mixing in this. One because I I don't think I would even do it properly. I would just be playing with the colors even more than I am, but probably in a worse way than getting some really weird colors. So I didn't do that. I just used it right off the set. Again, trying to do washes, trying to really mix the colors. Again, not really a proper technique. <laughs> you can see I'm just like scribbling my colors and like, oh, I'm just trying to mix it together. And yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you really shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Especially with the amount of water I'm putting down, it's really gonna warp the paper and the texture. And yeah, I do this thing where I pick up a lot. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And um, yeah, waste a lot of pigment. You could probably get that effect if you really wanted to it in the proper way. But you live and you learn. But for now, you don't see me. <laughs> learning too much in this. I'm still just splatting down colors and going, let me, let me mix it together. It actually doesn't half look bad, but it's really not the way you're supposed to be using watercolor. <laughs> but again, I am having fun with it and uh, really exploring what water, how it moves and how it acts. Like you can see it on videos and see the proper way it's supposed to be done. But you only get a sense of just how like finicky and delicate and precise it is until you really are in that sandbox just messing around with it yourself. And really even messing around just enjoying it because, because it is fun, you know, regardless of not really having achieving the effect that you wanted to. Still not that bad. I do try to do a little bit of color mixing, but nothing too crazy and wild and honestly i the color i made mean basically nothing different than the colors already available so nearly whatever but yeah i just i really am just seeing what the water does i really gave up trying to make something of a landscape in the beginning and i just like okay i'm just paint that random ass flower and just move on because i mean <laughs> Looks like a, something a kid could pick. <laughs> that is okay, you know, I'm not gonna be too, too harsh on myself. And I'm still learning. I definitely was not satisfied at this point. I did come in with a bit of a misconception that, oh, I know how to draw. I have an idea of how to paint. Really, I don't. And if I think back to all my art experience at all, I really have very little of any actual traditional painting. Most of the art I do traditional is just drawing. I just draw, <laughs> you know, the pencil. Not much to do with painting. And I had this idea that I would be you know, not too bad at it. And also with my, you know, painting digitally. But again, digital is different from traditional. And watercolor, definitely one of the trickier mediums to try to learn a little intimidating but you know maybe there's a bit of a tactic trying to do something that is a little harder a bit of a learning curve you know to do as your first thing maybe your thing will be not easier but i think i'll be more aware jumping into other mediums that is not gonna be what i expect will it be easier maybe probably not though but definitely this was like a splash of reality on myself that, you know, you're not so hot. <laughs> and, you know, I think of myself as an artist. I love drawing and just art in general. It, creativity is what moves me. It's what inspires me and really gives me like purpose and sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. Which is why I'm so happy that I am now actively trying to jump back into art. Man, it is humbling when you try something new and I'm semi-serious for the first time. Now, not to be too harsh on myself, but I am rusty. That being said, this has been a great experience and really learning my limits and realizing, although I knew this before, but now really realizing if I actually experiencing it, how important it is to 
constantly do art at least in not every day i mean i don't think hardly anybody could probably do anything every single day but for me ever since i finished i guess your standard k-12 school i really never did art hardly i could count on my hands just how many times and with my fingers like i said this before in one of the video before this the number of times that i've done art so again i can't be too harsh on myself but i do have higher expectations and why i really just let myself be free just doodling with this because yeah, I... <laughs> not so great. It is fun, like especially with the layers and with the watercolors since I'm not doing a wash this time. It is cool to get something of a transparent effect. And watercolor really does lend to making flowers so pretty. I love the look of watercolor flowers and I will learn one day how to make some nice watercolor flowers specifically. Cherry blossoms, they look so gorgeous. And I, yeah, I'm gonna make a full piece one of these days with just the cherry blossoms, just <laughs> out of pure satisfaction. So at the end here, I, I I gave up or something. I don't really know, but I was like, okay, this looks like a mess. Let me just play around with it more. And I just, you know, it wasn't that bad. And now I just actually kind of destroyed it. Because all the water, just, just way too much water, just puddled up in the middle and became a muddy little mess. And then I was like, okay, let me just do a thing and try moving it around. And it was kind of cool washing to see where the water went. But they kind of ruined everything at the same time. And I was like, eh, whatever, okay, enough playing around. And that was my first little foray into watercolor. Had a good time, definitely learned. <laughs> exactly how much it takes to learn something new, especially with watercolor, where you gotta control the water and uh, the layering, just really being mindful of what you're doing. And it does not lend itself to just let me just start something and start painting and see where it goes. You really can't do that with watercolor, you kind of really have to have an idea of what you're gonna do. And I'll learn this later on, but for now, that's just me messing around with watercolor and. I'm glad I chose it as my first little medium to jump into. Uh, it gives me an idea, you know, where this journey is gonna go, and I'm very excited. Thank you, and uh, yeah, take care, and to see you next time.